good afternoon everybody and uh, welcome to the 20th edition of Shats uh, Unfortunately, we have, we have not had these sessions for a long time. Uh, of course, for the pandemic as well as other uh, shortcomings that we have had through this period. But we are happy today to have back with us all of you in this gallery as well as uh, a very special guest. Uh, I welcome Council General of Italy in Kolkata, Mr. Gianluca Rubagotti, and uh, thank you very much for being with us and uh, having initiated this uh, session. I would call upon Paromita ma'am to just hand over a token of our appreciation for being here. Before I introduce the main speaker of today's session, I would also like to felicitate one of our very honored theoreticians and a person who has contributed a lot to the history of this part of the world as well as the rest. I welcome Taputi Go Thakurta, who is amongst us today. Thank you very much for being here, Taputi. Uh, we welcome you. I call upon uh, Minmoy ma'am to come and please finish. Thank you. I now welcome Isabella Nardi, uh, the speaker of the afternoon, and I welcome her and ask um, Shopna ma'am to please come up and felicitate her. Today's session, Indian Art in Italy, Italian Artists in India, is being presented by Isabella Nardi. Uh, many of you know about her, but it is my duty to introduce her to you this afternoon. Uh, Isabella Nardi had her PhD from the SOAS University of London, specialized in South Asian painting and visual culture from the 16th to the 20th centuries with particular reference to Northern India. Her current research reassesses devotional painting and photography from the pilgrimage town of Natadwara as well as the historic, cultural and artistic interconnections between the Krishnayat sect and Pushti Mark and the Rajput courts of Rajasthan. In the past, she has investigated Sanskrit's technical treaties on the theory of painting and their relation to the practice of Indian traditional arts. Formerly, she was a research fellow at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Maharaja Swami Man Singh II Museum and visiting professor at the JNU, the University of Oregon and Cleveland State University. Of the many books she has published, the most mentionable would be The Portraits of Devotion, popular uh, Monoroth paintings from Natadwara in the Ani Reilly collection, which was in 2019 by Mappin. The theory of uh, Chitra Sutras in Indian painting, which was in 2006. Apart from this, she has a long list of papers, which I think all of you will find on the website, though I can read it out, but it will unnecessarily take our time for this evening. So all of you can visit her website where there is enough information about her and her writings. So uh, without any further delay, I would request Isabella Nadi to please come on stage and lecture, uh, deliver her lecture. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind introduction and I also want to thank you for having me here today. It's such a pleasure and of course I also want to thank Gianluca who is uh, behind all of this. <laughs> I wouldn't be here uh, if not, I mean, because he, 
kind of pushed me to, to research this topic because for me it's totally new. Um, so um, I'm going to start uh, my lecture. So uh, Indian art in Italy and Italian artists in India is again a very, very new topic for me as you can. I mean, I've been working on Rajasthan uh, for a long time. Um, so I've divided the lecture in two parts. You see some of the Indian art in Italy. I'm starting with very early works only. I'm not going to talk about contemporary collections, otherwise we'll stay here forever. <laughs> and then some of the important artists that I found uh, uh, working here in India. Um, so my disclaimer here is that uh, if it's a little bit superficial, you know, bear with me, uh, it's really a new topic for me. <laughs> uh, can I get the next one? So my lecture is going to be very, very descriptive, so please bear with me. <laughs> if you <laughs> try not to fall asleep, but I understand. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with the so-called Codex uh, or Codice Casanatense which is um, a group or a set of paintings that reached Italy uh, very, very early on. Um, we know it's from India, well, we discovered it from India uh, only recently uh, through the studies of Jerry Losti, whom you might know, a great art historian uh, and curator at the um, British Library who passed away a few months ago. Um, and so the problem with the Codice um, is that it contains so many themes that it was difficult to, to figure out where it was made. There are images from Africa and from Malacca and many from India, so that was already a hint, I, I believe. Um, so, and this is the first set of painting that reaches uh, Italy. Uh, it is today, you can actually Google it, it's all online on Wikipedia, so that's easy. Uh, but if you want to see the real one, it is in Rome at the library called Casanatesi Library. And so it reached Lisbon and from Lisbon it, uh, it went to Rome in 1627. Uh, next one, please. So that's another page from the same. Uh, you find it a very, very beautiful painting. Um, it's the King of Kambe uh, or the Sultan of Gujarat. And um, according to Jerry Losty, the style of this, so he analyzed all of the pages and so looking at some hints, some visual hints, he, he said it's a Sultanate uh, school, a painting that. Um, a painter that was probably traveling also, but because the style is unusual, it's not proper sultanate, but uh, he, he compares some of the pages with the famous Nimat Nama, and you can see many similarities. So the Nimat Nama is this recipe book of the Sultan of Malwa. Um, so probably that might be one of the areas that the, paint, the painter came from. But there are many, many other options. Uh, so if you want to know more about this, there is a, the most late, the latest and better uh, written piece of work is the one by Jerry Losty, which is also on his academia.edu page. Next one, please. So you all know this one, <laughs> okay? Uh, Niccolò Manucci from Venice. Um, you know him, I am sure, because of Historia Domogor, right? Uh, published and republished, and uh, many, many times. Uh, I mean, there are so many editions. Uh, but for art historians. He is important too, uh, because when before dying, I probably di actually uh, he died in Chennai, so in Madras, and before dying, he sent back to Europe, probably Paris, all of his writing and his paintings. 
Uh, so um, his paintings are divided into two groups. One bound in something called the Libro Rosso, so the red book is called, which is in Paris. And the other one is the Libro Nero, so the black book, uh, which is in Venice. And so I have some examples of them. The Libro Rosso, uh, which is the early one, has portraits. So here is his portrait, that's him. It also says Niccolò Manucci on it. And so that's, that's part of that group of paintings of the Libro Rosso. Uh, can you go to the next one? So the Libro Rosso, which you can also access uh, fully with the text, because there are paintings and text by him explaining who he met and who he was. Of course, he didn't meet Akbar, but he heard about Akbar, and that's why he wanted a portrait of Akbar. That's uh, the one. Um, and only recently, a PhD student was able to kind of date more precisely uh, this album. Apparently, it's from the Deccan. Most probably, it's from um, what is the town? Um, Orangabad. Yes, Orangabad. Because it has some features, yeah, some features from Golconda, but some also from Rajasthan, so somewhere in between. It's a Deccani style. And so all of the paintings here were commissioned when Manucci was in the Deccan. And that's the date. 1678-85, that's, that's how precise we can be so far, by looking at all the portraits, reading what he left us, so all his, you know, uh, who he met, and so that's roughly the date of these pages, which you can access, again, the, uh, on, on the website of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Um, so, in this period, in Europe and Italy, there was a great interest in portraits. In portraits of kings from outside of Europe, so Indian kings and the dynasty, dynastic stories. Um, and um, Manucci is probably the first one um, that commissioned these works so provi it provides a visual element to the written one, because written, there was a lot of written stuff, but he provides a picture. So now we know how Akbar looked like and, and many other figures. So uh, he starts a trend, so to speak. So another interesting thing, which you will see also in the next one, but um, is that um, we're usually we call this type of um, called, um, recording of history something that starts with the British and the um, company painting, for example. The next one would be a good example, please. The practice of recording, um, classifying things, start very, very, very early. So Manucci is one of the precursors of what we would call um, company today, so which was so relevant uh, in Calcutta and in Patna. So there are precursors. So there are many people that were doing this before the British. Um, so this page is another good example from the other book, uh, the Libro Nero, which is in Venice. This is not accessible. <laughs> Italy is still in the Middle Ages doesn't put anything online, <laughs> but yeah, you can see one a nice example which I picked. Um, so in the Libro Nero we have um, maps of cities, maps of temples here, here the hill of Tirumala, there are um, similar uh, paintings of Kanchipuram, there are, um, can you go to the next one? <laughs> So there are also gods, a number of gods. So these are early depictions of gods. There were oh, maybe earlier than this, but um, there are depictions of um, Brahmins, different type of Brahmins, 
there are depictions of uh, different types of puja, so li like uh, puja to the linga. Um, so it's 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 a start of a trend of um, classifying things that were unusual, let's say, for for an Italian. So this. These paintings are a bit later, clearly South Indian, right? I mean, uh, the style is the South Indian style. And they were commissioned before his death. So he died in Chennai around, I think it's in the other, around 1700. So, so these were commissions right before he died and he sent everything to, back to, uh, to, to Paris and then from Paris to Italy. So that's kind of uh, how this reached us. Um, next. So here's some more text, more than painting. Um, I've been able to trace some very early museums. Uh, one of them, I was struck as much as you, and maybe more, because it's in North Italy in a city that no one go visit, but there was an Indian museum, uh, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, so this was founded by uh, Gian Antonio Baldini, look at his dates. He was probably like a trader, a dealer. He worked in Holland, in Amsterdam. So when he came back home in Piacenza, North Italy, in 1715, he settled, I mean, he built his own uh, museum of Asian art. So there was Chinese and Indian. Of course, in Holland at that time, there was a lot coming in, like a lot, many, many paintings and well, textiles, we know. Um, so he purchased many of them and he put them, basically his museum was his sitting room. I, I can imagine it was a big one, <laughs> like a wunderkammer of Asian uh, or Orientalia kind of uh, material. Um, I, I have pictures of something that he collected. So when he died, this Baldini, his collection was dispersed. So that's a problem. But there is also, interestingly, also for me, huh, I have to say, there was, he had a catalog. It, there is a catalog of his collection before it was dispersed. And this is published, it's online. Um, and so you can read all the Chinese thing, I mean the Chinese object that he had, all the Indian paintings that he had, all of his uh, descriptions, because he, he gave strange descriptions, he didn't understand what was a ragamala, he didn't know, so it, it put some, I mean his own interpretation of it. Um, so that's, that's kind of an interesting uh, thing, I'm going to go back to that later. There was a Museo Indico, so an Indian museum, in Velletri, near Rome. Um, and now those objects were later sold, and you can see them in the Museo di Capodimonte if you go to Naples. There is a corner in that big museum with Indian objects, which belong to this um, Stefano Borgia, who was a cardinal. And then there is another big chunk of paintings belonging to the Barberini family, um, which are in the Vatican Museum, and these are Mughal paintings. So I'm going to show one for each of these. <laughs> Um, so next one, please. So here is really uh, my favorite is Baldini because it, it was such a surprise for me to find someone from North Italy who settled his museum in his sitting room with many Indian paintings in it. As I said, the paintings were dispersed after his death, but before dying, uh, apart from the catalog that we have, he gave some of the paintings to make engravings, and by kind of looking, reading at the catalog and looking at some of the engravings of that period, 1700, made in Amsterdam, we were able to figure out some of the paintings that he collected. And this is one of them. 
Of course, he did not know probably who is Kambavati Ragini. So it's the Ragini, there is a Brahma in it. So it's, uh, but there is another interesting aspect of it is that there was a writing in his catalog uh, saying um, the idol, I don't even know how to read this, but Iksor, Iksor, which means Ishwar. That's what it is. So my guess is that he purchased that painting in, uh, in um, Holland, where he lived. And probably someone from Holland who sold that painting came from India with it. And someone in India said, oh, this is Ishwar. And the Dutch, you know, the Dutch pronounce things strangely. <laughs> so that's the Italian way of uh, writing the, you know, this Dutch pronunciation of Ishwar. That's my guess here. <laughs> and so he had many ragamalas, none of them identified as ragamala. He had also paintings of um, sadhus and yogis. And some of them are, I mean, you can search for them. They're published through these kind of engravings. So not the great picture, but we have an idea of what was his collection. Next one, please. So here we go uh, with the other collection of the Museo Indico near Rome. There are two paintings that are known. One is a Matsya representation, and the other one is a Kurma. So similar style coming from the same Dasavatara series of the Cardinal Borgia. And today they are in Naples. So not, nothing much to say. It's a miniature painting that we don't know how it reached Italy, but uh, he, he, he collected many things. Next one. So here we are in the Vatican Library has a good amount of Mughal paintings. Uh, some of them published, and apparently this one with a, a smaller group of uh, painting coming with it were a present of Jahangir to the Pope. And so you see it's a, it's a, paint, a Mughal painting from the time of Jahangir. You see Jahangir there. It's a geological genealogical tree of his family. So it's very interesting to see the, the kids. <laughs> so you can probably date to, I mean, the, the time of Jahangir, even though it reached a bit later Italy. And uh, that's in the Vatican. Next one, please. So, um, here I have the other side of my lecture, um, the Italian artists in India. You see, the list is very short. <laughs> so, um, what I want to show here is um, artists that really came here, really we know who they were, where they came from, because there are so many urban legends like, oh, my house was built by an Italian architect. I have heard this several times, but when you go to check, so who, who is he? What's his name? Zero, nothing. So, you know, it's more gossip <laughs> than anything else. So these people came to India, settled here, and uh, built or painted or sculpted something. I'm just going to read their name, then I have some examples for you. We have Antonio Regellini, who was an architect, Polindo Gilardi, whom you all know, <laughs> right? And we have Augusto Felici and Tommaso Colonnello. That's it. So I put them in chronological order. So let's look at uh, what we have. The next one. So, not the most beautiful church you have ever seen, but that's, that's built by this figure, Regellini, um, who came to India 
and worked at the service of Begum Samru. So Begum Samru converted to Christianity and she wanted a church to be built uh, and so she had Antonio Regellini to build it for her. And I found uh, his portrait too, painted by Givan Ram in 1835. So that's, uh, and that's in the UK, of course, in um, Bodleian Library, I think. Um, so the court of Sardana was an interesting place um, because there were many mercenaries coming through that place and many of the mercenaries were European and actually the great granddaughter of Began Samru married an Italian who is still, I mean, his descendants are in Italy. So there are some interesting connections there. I don't want to go into that, but I find it very intriguing. Uh, can you go to the next one? So when Began Samru died, his son, his adopted son, wanted a sculpture of her for to adorn her tomb and so that was also made by an Italian named Adamo Tadolini and apparently it was shipped to Calcutta and then from Calcutta it went to Sardana so that's a long trip <laughs> so, and that's her I mean you probably have seen her smoking the hookah right that's the, the iconic image of Begum Samru but here she doesn't have the hookah it's a more dignified um, uh, you know portrait and it's signed so to speak or inscribed with the name and date uh, so Adamo Tadolini of uh, 1842 and that's up there. I think the rest of the big composition uh, it's not by Tadolini but by I think local sculptures. Um, so that's that's our um, big ensemble. Okay next one. Okay, yes, <laughs> that, that, so I show you what I was able to find of Olindo Gilardi. So, le, yeah, maybe you look instead of talking, because <laughs> um, not much, I have four slides, but I have them, okay. So, um, I don't even know what's the material, I think they're like watercolors or pastels, I really have no idea because I haven't found much more information. But these, so that painting, which is now at DAG, was in, in an auction in London in 2009, and probably DAG bought only one, and this one, which is a uh, hill, you know, uh, landscape. I don't know where it is, but it exists somewhere. <laughs> Okay, um, next one. So here are his portraits. Uh, one must be in a collection in India because it was in, a, in an auction in India. Uh, but this one was uh, is an interesting. Uh, I thought it, uh, the title is Italian because I think uh, it was made in Italy probably. Well, I'll show you more. It's called Fakiri di Benare, so the Benares uh, Fakirs. Can you can you go to the next one? Uh, so um, I found it published on a book of 1916. So uh, an Italian book. So probably it was made after Gilardi went back to Italy that was in 1905 so it makes sense to place it in Italy even though so apparently after he went back he kept dwelling on, on his memories of India and he kept painting Indian themes uh, in his painting the problem is to find those paintings because yeah it was very hard to find this <laughs> so maybe um, 
So this one in particular was sold a couple of years ago in Italy, and it is in India, we know. I asked the auction uh, <laughs> house, it's in India. So there is someone interested, um, we have to find out who it is, or she. So next one. And uh, these are also Gilardi's. Um, this is published in a catalog in Italy, so probably done same when he came back. When he, but so it's titled this one, um, Muslim Riots. So he might have seen, witnessed something like this, and so that's how he painted it. And the other one is a street in Lahore where the Maharaja is going or like passing by on his horse. Uh, and that, the second one, is for, from the same book of 1916 that I, I've shown earlier. So uh, I wonder if any of, I mean, if you find this familiar, like stylistically, but I don't know, oh, to something that you have seen here, I'm just curious to know about that. Uh, I think this is all I have, I have of Gilardi. Next one. <laughs> yes, sorry. Very short. Um, so here is um, the sculptor uh, named Augusto Felici, who worked for the Maharaja of Baroda, and he produced many, many, many things. My sense is that, I mean, uh, officially, he was on a payroll between um, 93 and 97, but I think he went uh, up and down. I don't know if that was possible, but I think uh, uh, he also went to Italy and then India. And this is one of his um, big sculptures, they're still in Baroda somewhere. And I read uh, there was some dispute over this sculpture, I, I'm not sure, <laughs> on the local um, newspaper. But I think it's interesting to see that Italian journals are uh, writing about it, like the previous one, also Felici features in some Italian journals, like Illustrazione Italiana of 1898. He also features in a much earlier of 94 uh, journal. So he was popular. Um, next one. He's so famous apparently for uh, his sculptures, which were both in white marble and bronzes, many, many bronzes, which you find at the Lakshmi Villas Palace in Baroda. And that's the famous Tanjore girl that you see, I think you can see her standing there. Um, it's not the great picture, but I mean, that's her. And this is uh, the fakir, so called. And this is the taming of cheetahs. Yes, and there are many. Um, there is also an archive in Italy with all the um, photographs of his works. Not, I don't know where, but it's there. <laughs> I'm still looking for it. So it's very much a work in progress. Um, next one, please. Okay, so here is the last one. Last one, uh, oh, and the later one. It's. Um, so we are in New Delhi, uh, Rashtrapati Bhavan of New Delhi, the Ashok Hall. I've never been there, but um, so uh, most of the paintings you see on the walls were painted by Tommaso Colonello, who was a painter, with his um, help, I mean, his, uh, uh, how do you say, with other Indian painters. And, um, the why was he invited? That's a mystery for me, but <laughs> still a mystery. Probably he was actually even living in Delhi because his family lived in Delhi apparently for, for 80 years. So, but I'm still wondering uh, why he was invited instead of somebody else. Uh, can you go to the next one? So this, the hall, the Ashok Hall, um, the centerpiece is actually not by him, 
which is the filter painting, which was given um, by um, Fatali Shah to the British, and the British then wanted it on this room, to decorate this room. So, um, Colonello was asked to, you know, work around this. And that's why he painted um, things in a Persian style, because, you know, Kajar. And so you can see that in the next painting, in the next slide, please. So these are, that's, that, that's his work. I don't know of any other works by him, but um, that's his signature on the walls and the date, 1933 and 34. So it's kind of a Persian looking um, to match the Kaja painting that was there. Okay, next one. Okay, so that was uh, a long list. It's a list, more than an analysis, as you see, but it's a work in progress. Let me tell you that to find these images and this information, it took me a year <laughs> because to dig into journals, and it's, it's, it's a, you know, uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's what I have for now. Uh, I'm still on a chase of the Ghilardi collection that must be around. <laughs> so one day I'll find it. And so thank you for listening. <laughs>